I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? In today's glorious show, we have six players, the hot team in the north and the cold team, well, more in the west than the south. Either way, they're facing off in a 3v3 ladder map. Let's meet the hot team first. In the corner position for hot team, Evil Arcade Machine is 1043 rated. He's UEF in orange. In the rearguard position, Noble Ice, who's 1123 rated. He's Cybran in red. And in the flank position, we have Warren KC, 1082 rated, Cybran in burgundy. Let's meet their mirrors on the code team. In the corner position, we have none other than Bream, whom we've seen a couple of times being berated one way or the other. Let's see if he's any different this game. He's 858 rated. He's UEF in mauve. In the rearguard position for color team, we have Quasar, who at 1425 is the highest rated player in today's game. He's Cybran in baby blue. And last but not least for color team, in the flank position, we have Machno, who is 1019 rated. He's Cybran in dark blue. So that's two Cybrans and one UEF for each team, a perfect ratio matchup. Now for the map. Not a great deal of reclaim. Couple of spots easily pickable up by the players on each side and only a little bit of reclaim in the middle. Big expansion here in the front for each team, but nothing super contested. And look how turtly it is. There's a flank passage on each side and a central passage. And then all of this is impassable, I think, except for air. So you'd expect this to be quite a turtly map. Let's see if it proves to be that way. We've got very early greed here from Bream and from Quasar, both from Machno, sorry, both of whom have gone out with early engineers. We have got one tank out from Machno, whereas we're seeing a lot more early defense and aggression labs here, labs here from the hot team. However, hot team look like they're sending their comms forward faster Machno still in his base, Quasar only just moving forward, whereas Arcade is already at this mex with his com, and Warren is moving forward. Dream setting up a big grid of PGens here. I'm quite surprised by that. You'd have thought he'd want it more safe in his base. And Machno, though he has got a Mantis out and a lab, he's just put them defensively to stop early raids coming round here. And it looks like he's doing the same with this Mantis and this lab here. Now, in previous games, we've seen Bream's economic greed. And as you can see here, he's already ahead on eco-generated compared to the entire rest of the board. Noble Ice a bit behind, but that's because he's power stalling. I He's not doing anything I can see that would directly result in that other than overspending a bit on factories. He's already got three land factories up and all of them are producing. He's building a fourth and he's only got two NGs on PGens. I'd be having a little, little more on PGens than that. Bream is our first com to go for an upgrade and unsurprisingly he's going for T2. He's probably looking to set up a firebase here and he's already defending this flank passage with a turret and lots and lots of walls. Looks like on this side Warren is planning a little raid. He's got units here, mostly labs. Right rather than going for the more turtly suggestion that we've got from Bream. Q 
Quays are advancing to defend from the front. I like that. And now Quasar has the lead in Eco just because he's got this lovely expansion of six mixes here all to himself. Now, I don't disagree with that. Not only is it the closest to his um, his starting position, but he's the highest rated player on the team. And similarly, Noble Ice has taken this one. Now, given the power trouble Noble Ice was having earlier, is he power stored? He is actually balancing his power quite well. He's got just enough to make it, though if I were him, I would perhaps have put up a power storage before I did all that. And Warren is at last raiding with his units. What is there to defend? There's only two tanks here, so Warren might actually get some damage done on this side. He kills the defending units, he kills the mechs, and he kills the NG. Nice. But, these are only labs, apart from like one Mantis which is heavily damaged, and with this com, I expect that we're going to see no trouble for Macno to clean it up. And he does no trouble. We have a transport out from Quasar. It looks like he's only dropping Reclaim NGs at the moment, but... I can see there being a lot of potential for drops here and here on this map and of course vice versa for the other team. So let's hope that we get some interesting drop based shenanigans of the transport drop nature, not of the connection drop nature of course, coming on later this game. So Quasar is now also on his way to T2. Whereas our first aggressive upgrade is the gun upgrade from Noble. Nothing yet on Arcade or Warren, nothing yet on Machno. Warren lo looks like he might get a raid in response to his coming in from Machno, but I think Warren's already got enough to dis defend despite this bomber. The bomber sees the Sky Summer here and backs away, but there's more over here. In fact, there's quite a lot of spam from Warren over here, and he's going for Labs and Artie. I don't know if I like that. I'd prefer Tanks and Artie at this stage of the game. Quasar advances with his T2Com, and Bream is doing what we saw him do in previous games. He is setting up multiple Ward T2PDs with a shield, a flak, and a tactical missile defense and he's just setting it up here to cover basically the entire middle section here there's basically no reclaim here so I don't think that um, it's gonna really provide much in the way of economic cover but it will certainly be good at preventing any raids coming through the middle and on this side the raid we mentioned from Machno has stored and Given that this PD is going up, I don't think it's going to get any further. Machno agrees, he retreats. But Warren's bringing all of his spam across down here, and it looks like it might be about to push in. The exploratory raid from Machno is crushed by this huge heap of spam, but it also looks like we've got a nice big heap of spam coming in from Noble with his gun com. So let's go to split screen to track these two events. On the left, here is Noble, but he's sending his com forward unsupported and there are these three T2 PDs. So I think that might be a mistake for Noble. Warren hasn't brought his comment here, and I think he could, because there's Machno's com, but it's naked. There's only a bit of spam, but I think the com from Machno will be enough to repel this spam. So I think that's two mistakes from Hot Team. And look at Noble. He's been smashed down to half health by that T2PD right away, and he is forced to retreat. That seems a little bit unwise. And similarly, Warren is forced to retreat. So both those raids unsuccessful. Let's go back to single screen. 
And no sooner are we back on single screen than I see our hopes and dreams being fulfilled. I see a drop, a drop of artillery being just snuck around into the back of Warren's base. Now there's quite a lot of sky slammers in there so that drop is going to have to watch out that it doesn't just get shot down before landing. And I feel it's going to be close. The sky slammers fire. The hit points the transport goes down but not before it's landed all but one of its arty and immediately the arty open up and evil arcade says he's gonna drop too Nova I says watch out for drops but it's a little late for that because the drop is right here and it's shooting sky summers do have anti-ground capacity unlike most other anti-air guns but it's not great and as long as these tanks keep dodging these medusae it shouldn't be a problem and I think we're going to see five T1 mexes lost to this attack. Were they all T1? Looks like it. But just is coming to clear it up. This factory is still producing and the drop is cleared up. But still, five T1 mexes, pretty nice. And as a result, look at that, Cold Team are now 30 eco ahead. Ooh. However, Warren has had to bring quite a lot of his spam back and out of position as a result, so there's now potential for shenanigans up front. However, we saw Evil Arcade saying in the chat that he was going to drop, and does he come through on that? He does not disappoint. That is no fewer than six transports laden with naughty goodness coming to smash down in the base of Bream where there is almost no anti-air, almost no defence apart from a couple of labs and five T2 mixes. This feels like it's going to be brutal. Most of this is Lobos, there's a couple of archers and even an engineer or two in here which goes straight to putting up a radar, that's a nice touch. And look at this, he opens fire and instantly boom, two mixes down. There's also a T2 HQ here, three mixes down, and if that is destroyed, then this will be really, really bad for Bream. I don't think he's going to be able to save it. A bomber comes in from Quasar, but there is anti-air in there, and not only that, but Arcata supported with fighters. Quasar brings his fighters in to respond. But that entire base of Breams has been wiped out. That is brutal. But we have to stop and go to split screen again because do you see what I see? So up here on the mini-map we can see that Quasar is bombing out the drop. We'll come back to it if it actually gets anything done. But more importantly we have two things to look at here. We have tactical missiles from Warren. And we have another drop from Nobu coming in to hit poor old Machno. Now this drop is landing a little further from the base and it looks like he's going to have a chance to get up some defences. But meanwhile the tactical missiles launch. Tanks come to defend from Machno's drop but here's poor old Machno himself. Boom! Machno is hit by tactical missiles, a sneaky snipe. Our first ejection from the game at 13 minutes 50. Meanwhile a big swarm of tanks come out of Magno's base and just eat up Nova's drop. But just in time for Magno to die and it ought to be handed over to Quasar. Meanwhile we can see his bombers have cleared up Green's old base. So back to single screen again. Now looking at Bream's base, we can see that one problem they're going to have is that there are no engineers nearby at all. There's a couple down here for Quasar, but I think Quasar is leaving it to Bream to take his base back, which is polite, but Quasar could have probably been there first. Bream is having to trickle back all these engineers. It's going to be a while before they get there. And as a result, Hot Team still has that equal lead of around 30. Tactical missiles from mobile missile launches also firing on Quasar's front line here. And meanwhile, Quasar has been upgrading. He's got T3 
and he's got Nano on his com now. So that is a very hardy com, even without any vet, he's got 17,000 hit points and a decent heap of regen. What's Machno asking about? Well, we've got this big push from Warren now, but he's delayed just a little bit, and that's given a chance for PD to go up for Quasar here and for a few T2 tanks to be brought in. So I don't see this being immensely successful as long as Quasar doesn't take his eye off the ball. But you know what his eye is on right now? It's the laser. My dudes, with T3 and Nano and a laser being built on the front line, are we about to see the unthinkable? Are we about to see some honourable Cybran upfront laser play? None of this sneaky teleport. I think we might be. Are you excited? I hope you're excited. You getting that tingly feeling inside? Meanwhile, Noble has sent another drop down here and this space is much less well defended. I think he's going to clear it up so the drops are relentless from the hot team. Unfortunately for Noble, there is a T2 PD that's been thrown up quickly in defense, but they're still gonna claim five T1 mexes, which is better than nothing, but here's the, here's the big thing we're waiting for. Quasar, Stealth, Nano, T3, Laser. He's walking forward. They see him and a missile hits him. He shrugs it off. Blam! A hoplite is smacked out of existence by the laser and now they know what's coming for them. Look at this, my dudes. This is brutal. There is a cyber com with a laser with massive amounts of regen and with... Well, Boar's hanging out as he charges in. Backed up some way behind by spam with a bit of air cover. But it's mainly just this com on his own with a monkey laser and he's going to smash his way straight into Warren's face. Warren runs away and normally I would say call him a coward for that but in the face of this I think he's being wise. Discretion is the better part of valour. And he's clearing up support factories here, he's smashing his way in, he's taking out those TMLs which claimed his teammate. And he's already gone from zero vets to five, killing 11,000 mass in the space of a few seconds. This is amazing. T1 bombers come to rain fire down on him, and sure, they do a bit of damage, but look at that regen. He'll be back up to full health in a matter of seconds. And with his T3, he's put up a SAM back here, so that the bombers which fly over him die instantly. Furthermore, Flak is coming into support, and as more spam comes forward to try and stop him, it has almost zero effect as his monkey laser face smashes through the enemy units. This is amazing work and I love to see it. This is a noble Cybran, my friends. A noble Cybran. On the minimap we see that Warren is going around the side there and Arcade is actually going around the top, but Bream has defended. However, We'll only go and look at the aftermath of that a bit later because I think Dream looks like he's got enough there to defend and remember he was building point defence there. This is where we have to focus. Quasar is still in the green somehow. He's now getting Janus fire falling upon him as Arcade brings air into counter and he's only got a little bit of flak left but he is being supported by the flak and that's what's important because that monkey laser face will be able to do more than enough damage and also T2 PD, quite a big bank of it over here. But as Quasar wanders around, smashing stuff up, how much has he killed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's about to claim his 10th T2 mechs from his opponents. And that is utterly brutal. He also smashes out another support factory 
Okay, now where's he heading? He's heading back this way, because rather than push into this huge fortification, he can get a lot more done over here. And there's a couple of T2PDs that Warren has thrown up, but against this ridiculously super-powered com, there's very little that this amount of build capacity will be able to do. And indeed there isn't smack. Down it goes. And as a result, we see that Code Team are again ahead in the eco states. I've been enjoying this flip flap between the team. But Breen, whose com is also T3, but otherwise no other upgrades, has also decided to join in the fun. And he's been putting up Sam's back here to protect. But Breen is in a worse position than Quasar, who has quickly thrown up PDs to try and help clear up the spam that's attacking Bream but I think Bream may be in a little bit of trouble because he is being utterly swarmed by spam and despite the T3 upgrade I think there's enough coming in here that he's going to be in danger he's putting up T1 PDs which is a good response because T1 PDs actually have more DPS at close range than T2 PDs and Quasar is bringing his common with the laser now, having put up these PDs, and it might be enough to save Green, but Green is de deep into the yellow, and these gunships are going to be a problem now that the SAM that Green built has been taken out. The flap from Quasar is not getting through. Green puts up another SAM, though. This might be enough to save him. He puts up, well, he tries to put up another SAM, but just has come in. And Dream is down into the red as the Justice fire upon him, the Spam fires upon him, and a trio of Stingers pops in. But the second Sam is erected, and the air units are taken out. Dream still in the red, but Quasar was trying to throw up a shield. The shield goes up, and Dream is at least temporarily protected as Quasar's laser takes out everything under the shield. But the shield goes down in a matter of seconds as hordes and hordes of Lobos come charging in. And more gunships turn up from Arcade. The anti-air turrets are taken out. Bream tries to throw up a flak, but he's only got 500 hit points left. And Bream is out. Bream is our second ejection from the game at 22 minutes 30. He didn't suicide. He must have died in the explosion from something else. And that leaves Quasar with his insanely super-powered T3 Nano Mazercom as the only player left on code team. Quasar was retreating back to his base. He's done so much damage. He's got his team, or rather just himself now, an eco lead, although that's shedding away as we speak. He's done massive amounts of damage. He can just shrug off this gunship firepower while he walks back home into the line of his Sams and his flak, and he's bringing out flak to support. So I think he'll survive the walk back. But oh my, was that a passage of play and a half. He's still got a bit of rebuilding to do from the various raids and drops as we can see here. And I think we can stop for a quick eco check. So Quasar first. He is massively, massively overflowing mass because he's just inherited an immense amount of stuff from Bream and Machno and he hasn't really had a chance to set it building because he's been too busy microwing and generally um, generally preparing for his crazy push so he needs to spend a lot more. Warren, good balance. Very good balance from Noble. I like to see that indeed that he could do with a tiny bit more power and also very good balance from Arcade so the hot team have beautiful balance. Quasar, though he has a good eco, really needs to get his building under control in order that he can actually make use of the eco he's got. And with these T3 NGs, I would not say no to an experimenter going up here. Throw up a monkey lord, bring it in with your Mazercom. That could be fun. But T1 RT, both. Lobos and Medusae pushing in from the hot team players supported by mobile missile launchers and it's cracking its way through that firebase originally set up by Dream 
and there's not really much here to defend. If it pushes in, it could get work done. However, since this is all arty, as long as Quasar can keep these T2 tanks moving, which though he isn't, if he were keeping them moving, they would clear up the RT no problems. And Quasar loses his T3 P gen here. Now, he got a big question mark on it. Makno queried it earlier with a ping, and now he says, yep, as it goes down. But it was understandable. Quasar had focused on getting his T3 on his comm early, and he goes out to maser out that brick that was approaching. But he needed it for the maser. So hopefully now he's focusing on building T3 power in the back, and he is. Is he power stored as a result of that? No, he's got 4k power, so he'll be fine. And as you can see, his eco is still producing, but look at the huge eco that Evil Arcade has been focusing on, leading Hot Team now to have a 50 mass lead, despite the fact that Quasar hasn't lost any more mexes. But this multi-pronged pressure, and we have now got these hot plates coming around here, means that Quasar is going to have to pay attention on a lot of fronts. He's putting up a monkey rather slowly on the front line. I do not like that. I think that just in case more pressure turns up, he should be building the monkey back here. And he's planning a nuke. Look at that. There's a nuke queued up, heavily shielded and stealthed. And see, Hot Team have already spotted that monkey. Noble Eye sees it under construction and points it out. What they're going to do about it, I don't know. There isn't a great deal of anti-air here that I can see. Quasar is putting up a shield, but where's his comm throwing up the SAMs that we need to see? An exploratory push of T1 RT from Noble, but I don't think that's going to be a problem for Quasar's major comm, and indeed it isn't. So that nuke has been started. Actually, it looks like Quasar is power stalling a bit. Let's just see how hard. Pretty hard, to be fair. Uh, more than a T3 P gen hard. And more than a T3 P gen hard is pretty hard, you cannot deny. Meanwhile, a stealth firebase is being put up by Arcade. And that's enabling him to open fire on all these things, but Quasar's comm should be enough to take it. Sure, that's a lot of T2 PD, but look at that laser as he just goes to town on it. This is amazing. And he supports it with tanks. There are more PDs back here, but the tanks are probably going to be able to deal with that. I don't like Quasar just leaving his comm there, and indeed he agrees with me. Looks like he's falling back wisely. Now the monkey has had a little more build power put on it and it is getting close to being done. 72%, 73%, it's about to go into the green. That's a lot of transports out for Quasar. Do you think that's a mistake or do you think he's planning to drop something somewhere? Meanwhile, mobile missile launches are coming out here. There's a lot of TMD, but I think that in order to actually stop this from eventually cracking through because these hits are getting through I think that Quasar needs to push forward a bit here and the monkey is getting to its feet Quasar gets our first experimental of the game which is this delicious monkey lord and what are Hot Team going to do about that? They had such a problem when Quasar came along with his monkey laser on his face. Now he's coming along with a monkey laser on an actual monkey, which is arguably one of the best places for a monkey laser. In it comes. The 
It looks like we're going for a push straight into Warren's base and that's probably the best bet because he can get in there and do some eco damage if the monkey makes it through this. Nope, instead of heading for Warren's base, it's coming in towards the main fire base of Arcade. Good anti-air support from... Okay, why is Quasar retreating? Is he waiting for this second monkey that he's putting up? Obviously just hoping to match a lot more support for the monkey. This wave of bricks from Noble is coming forward. And this monkey feels like it's out of position. These boys need to fall back and wait for the monkey. There's no point guarding the monkey if the monkey can't guard you. And these are dying. This was quite a mistake from, from Quasar. Still, the monkey is eating its way through the bricks and it's going to be a big ask for Hot Team to stop it, especially as Quasar has another monkey. Okay, that's a lot of brick fire now though. And the monkey retreats as it goes down into the yellow, down into the red. Are these bricks going to be enough to stop the monkey? If they're not, those Corsairs certainly are. 3,000 hit points and gunships come in and the monkey goes down so it would probably have escaped the land force but it's not going to escape the air force however a second monkey is already complete Noble saying we lost a second monkey is already complete for Quasar and it pushes forward however we're going to have to split screen and this is the reason we need to go to split screen. There's a horde of broadswords going to town on Bream's old base. However, there's a lot of flak in there. And I don't know how long they're going to last. On this side, the monkey is still basically undamaged. But that's because it hasn't really pushed in yet. I think these broadswords could possibly be better used, given the amount of flak, in, you know, taking out this actual monkey. And there's an air response from Quasar. It's still mainly inties rather than anything higher tech, but it looks like in combination with the flak, it's going to take out the broadswords. Meanwhile, the monkey has already got a decent amount of mass killed, but it's in the yellow. Okay, back to single screen. So here's the monkey taking damage as it advances, but it's already got 17,000 mass killed as it smashes down these T2 mexes. There are a few bricks trickling in and there's a TML firing upon it which I don't know if that's the best defence because the monkey's constantly on the move. However, there are now ravages going up back here for Arcade and the monkey is down into the red and it's retreating. There are also broadswords on it from Arcade. However, there's flak to support from Quasar and there's this T3 mobile anti-air further back to fall back to but 2600 HP it survives. 2600 HP and this monkey survives. However, another one is already up and running and yet another has been started. If I were Quasar, I would be bringing back this monkey all the way back here, destroying it and reclaiming it. And he's also taking damage from fire coming in across from this TML perhaps, I think. And so he needs shields and TMD up here. He's got a shield which is down, but where's his TMD? So this monkey retreating, this new monkey advancing, and this one looks like it's going for Warren. I think this is the right choice. There's a T3 mechs here, which is instantly destroyed by the monkey laser. There's this huge bank of TMLs. This monkey needs to come in here and get some damage done, though I don't think he can see that because of this stealth generator right here. However, that's a lot of renegades, and they pour fire down upon the monkey. However, lots of anti-air back here which can come in and support. And coming in and support it does. The monkey's still in the green and the air attack just dies. How 
was that nuke doing? Speak of the devil. The nuke launches and it's heading straight for Arcade's base. Arcade runs because he knows he doesn't have a nuke defense. Indeed, he's only just started building it. At the moment, there's a nearly 300 lead for Hot Team in Eco. Could we about to see another big swing as that nuke comes in? We all love a bit of a cinematic shot as the nuke descends. Boom! Arcade space is lit up in nuclear fire. This monkey's come back all the way over here. Maybe it's thinking of taking a charge in here, but that's going to be difficult with all of these artillery pieces as well as the ravages. I think that if it tries that, it's going to die. And Noble Ice just commits suicide. Noble Ice thinks they're losing. We'll see if he's right later on. In comes the monkey, but not only are those arty pieces opening up, and it's so do the ravagers. It's getting shredded. Look at all this. That's an immense amount of ravagers. I said we were looking at quite a turtley map, and are we looking at a turtley map? That is a rhetorical question. The answer is yes, we are looking at a turtley map. The monkey is down, the spam is retreating. Now, the hot team lead in Eco is fluctuating. It looks like it's settling in at around 250 as they rebuild, and that's a lot of Corsairs being built by Warren. Is he going for a sneaky snipe? These transports have yet to be used. And this monkey is regenerating, but another monkey is about to be ready. He's doubling down on the monkey play, and with all this immense amount of defence here, I think that the monkeys either need to be going right or not at all. Quasar has fallen his comeback, and I think that's why we're getting to the phase of the game where, even with the monkey laser, he can't afford to be pootling around up front. And Warren has an awful lot of trebuchet mobile artillery here, launching its shells at the front lines of Quasar, which we can see in the distance there. The monkey heads out to deal with them. There are T2 PDs here, but I don't think that's enough to stop the monkey. Well, something stopped the monkey. It's just stopped walking. Move forward, my dude. Move forward with that monkey. A big tactical missile round aims for the monkey, but it doesn't connect because it falls where the monkey was standing still. So that's a lot of eco wasted for nothing as the monkey charges forward. The artillery pieces are wisely falling back and that's actually quite a lot of bricks which we can see in wait from Warren. The monkey charges and it sheds hit points. I mean it's getting damage done but it's not going to pay for itself if it dies here and the course as we mentioned earlier come in and smash it down. Down goes yet another monkey for Quasar and I feel he's having trouble after his beautiful early game play. It feels like there's just enough from the turtley shenanigans of the hot team to keep Quasar back. And Warren is going round the flank. We saw a couple of flank plays earlier, but none as potent looking as this heap of bricks. Robin, my dude, come on, what have we got to actually face it? We've got TMDs, and that's basically it, because he's only expecting mobile missile launches in that area. Well, I will tell you what are not mobile missile launches. It's these bricks, and quite a lot of tank and AA spam rhinos, sky slammers, and also those trebuchets are joining. So that is certainly not mobile missile launches. What's Quasar going to do about it? Warren wonders, can you do satellite or fat boy? And this is all unshielded. 
this is all unshielded, a satellite would be brutal. Evil Arcade, however, mentions that he's focusing on a mega, which he is. It's here. I think Quasar could also do worse than to build a mega. He's got his monkey fallen back to here. And that's actually pretty nice, as he's got another monkey being built up front, but I don't know if that'll survive. However, that monkey will be a crucial line of defence against this push from Warren, who's coming round the flank as we said he might. Huh. I just noticed that all of these are HQs. That's a bit of a mistake from Warren. Seven T2 HQs. That's a huge amount of wasted mass that he didn't need to spend. A tactical missile snipe comes out for... Is it going for the monkey? Not sure what it was going for. Yes, it was. Look how much damage that... Actually, was that the original monkey? I think that's... Um, so I think that tactical missile snipe just missed. The nuke launches and it's heading for Warren's expansion. Front is loaded, says Arcade. And that's over here. But this is going nowhere near it, and this will take out the expansion. If it takes out the TMLs as well, that will be beautiful for Quasar. Boom! It takes out some of the TMLs as another big round is launched. Doesn't take them all though, however, it smacks a lot of Eco down, and Quasar has been focusing on Eco. And so, for the first time in a long while, the Ecos are actually even again, give or take. Factory gets shot out, and more mobile arty, this time from Arcade, is bombarding the front. So Quasar is being forced back, however, this big force from Warren is trying to push using the arty, but there are now two monkeys, including the new one, in defence. However, offence is the best defence, my dude. Push them forward, send them in. Send them in, or this huge army will just wipe you and you won't have anything to say about it. That looks like he's seen it and he indeed moves both monkeys forward in order to respond. Good, I approve. How's that mega doing? Not burning very fast. The Corsairs come in and they smash fire down on one of the monkeys, but they smash fire down on the less damaged monkey. And so it survives for rather longer. It may still die. It does still die, but it's given Quasar time to come and clear up the Corsairs with his ASFs before they kill the second monkey. And the second monkey is now going to town on those bricks. The Arty retreats, but I think that a quick push from that monkey could clean it up and stop it causing any more damage. Looks like he's not really chasing though, looks like he's only going this far. I think that's a mistake and that he needs to move on and shoot that arty with the monkey. But he's choosing not to. I mean, Quaid has got a lot to focus on so I can't really blame him for missing a couple of plays but that could be a mistake, especially if the arty gets far enough away to start firing on the monkey which is quite badly damaged. Between them, Arcade and Warren now have, what, 30 T3 Mobile Arty on the front? And on top of that, the crab is finally about to finish. Quasar starts a bug. He's starting that quite far forward. I don't like that. I think that should be... It's a flying machine. It's fast. And it can fly over these rocks. So I would have started it back here. I would have temporarily stopped producing ASFs. Well, not stopped producing, but moved all this assistance off and used them to produce the Soul Ripper. However, Quasar was choosing it to produce with only this assistance up here. And it's under a stealth field and it's mostly under a shield. But it's not going up super fast. And this vast arty bank, now with the megalith in support, is a big threat. Will that Soul Ripper survive to completion?
the force advances here and this monkey has indeed just been shot out. I didn't see whether it was the TMLs or the artillery. Tell me in the comments below if you were watching that carefully. But either way, that monkey is shot out, and so this artillery can now return to its shenanigans over here. So that was quite a mistake from Quasar. Flying gunships, says Warren, as if there were any other sort of gunship. I know what he means, though. He's pointing out the existence of the Beetle, which has been assisted a little more and is now almost into the green. There it goes, into the green. But artillery fire is raining down on it, and the Mega is advancing. Quasar was just responding with spam against the Mega, which would be fine against the Mega on its own with its slow firing cannons, but these mongies and the couple of bricks joined in there means that that spam has just been killed, not a problem. He also advances with some pillars here, but again, they're not enough and that Mega is going to get damage done still. I think the Soul Ripper will just about launch, especially if the Mega stays back and doesn't focus it. Especially if the Mega decides to shoot that war here, silly Mega, the Soul Ripper launches. And immediately it's moving to clean up the lesser spam. I approve of that, I think that's a good choice. Because if it takes out the anti-air, if it takes out all the longer ranged artillery, then the Mega won't have anything to support it and then the Mega can be swarmed down or even just Soul Ripper down. Looking at the Air Force, I think we have a definite aerial lead. In fact, do the North team have T3 air at all? Well, they have both a Novax and a Duke going up. The Novax has been stopped in favour of the Duke. They've got T2 air... There are also two T2 average kills here. What's up with you, my dudes? But all of these are T2 air, so the only player with ASFs is Quasar. So th that Soul Ripper should be quite easy to defend. Speaking of so, because where's it actually gone? Well, it's back here now. It's taken a lot of anti-air fire from the ground, but it's still alive. And, of course, being a cyber, it's regenerating. It needs just, like, one more kill. But, ooh, look at this. This is a defensive nuke position, my dudes. Does the Mega think it's coming? Yes, it does. The Mega is retreating. How far will it get before the nuke hits? That Mega is almost on full health. And, as a result... Boom! It loses nearly two-thirds of its health in that nuke kit. And as if that weren't enough, that nuke has also cleaned up quite a bit of the units supporting it. So, a lovely defensive nuke from Quasar. Let's see a few more of those, please. Meanwhile, he's building whalers with which to inflict some damage and support the Soul Ripper. And that Soul Ripper is... Well, it's regening, but not very really fast. Come on, he's... Oh, he's got the first vet on it, though. He's done some more damage, so it is regenerating a bit faster. Will that be enough to turn the tide? And will that Duke finish? I think that Duke is going to go up, because I don't think that Quasar even knows about it. We need more fighters, says Warren, and he is not wrong. However, notice here that we've seen quite a lot of tactical missile damage from that bank against Quasar's mass points here. And again, the rebuild has been fast. These are being built straight to T3 and then capped from, um, from Warren. And these are being also upgraded, though they should have been capped first. That's a mistake from Arcade. And so again, we see a 200 mass lead for the hot team. However, that may be about to change as we have a huge air raid with multiple whalers and the Soul Ripper coming across here. Though some of the whalers peel off, I, I don't like that. Because there's nothing really to kill here. Why is he holding back? There are some Sams going up here and he needs to take them out before any more are built. There are also these fellows, and he needs to focus them. I mean, the whalers could focus them neatly while the Soul Ripper smashes everything else. Good, he is focusing them. But is it too little too late? Because there are now four Sams being built by Raz SCUs. Maybe it's not. He's getting them down. The Soul Ripper is still in the yellow, and 
Things are dying. However, he hasn't actually inflicted much damage here. We need to come back and deal with some of these. And they push in. Is he going for a snipe? Well, if he is, it's too late because the Soul Ripper has gone down. The shield has gone down, but and it's quickly gone up again, or at least a different one has, and the whalers are dead, so if that wasn't an attempted snipe, it failed, as a huge heap of Kulgar T3 mobile anti-air drives across. That's an awful lot of T3 mobile anti-air from Arcade. That's ridiculous. Strategic launch detected. And we get another nuke, and he's only rebuilt a little bit of that, but there's a rather silly U there, there's four T3 mexes there. We'll see how much it damages, 126,000 mass killed so far. Over here, that's quite a big push and may cause some damage, but it's falling back. Maybe it's waiting for this next mega or for the repair, sorry that's the same mega, but it still needs to repair. The nuke hits, and it looks like it's killed about 22k more mass from before, so that is definitely worth it, that hit. It's paid for itself. And Quasar has a Mega of his own, a Mega and several bricks. He's advancing here, but I am certain this Firebase is too strong to take out. If you waited, perhaps built another Mega, and then came in and just focused everything on, where is it, the SMD right here, then I think he could do that, sacrifice his army, and nuke what remained. That would be the play, I think, but is he going to do it? He's already having trouble pushing in because of this vast bank of mobile RT from Arcade. And that looks like we've got artillery fire. Yes, the Duke is completed and he's putting up shielding around it. He's putting up P-Gens around it. Quasar is not happy with that. He thinks that it's unsporting, perhaps. 2v1 and you go arty. Weak, he says. Is it weak, or is it just making the most of your position? Ecos are almost level again, so Quasar has been doing an excellent job of holding up his eco in the face of this, not least by nuking the opponent's eco quite regularly. But this arty feels like it is going to be enough to get through unless he puts some really heavy assistance on these shields. And still not back to focusing the Novaks though, maybe he's going to wait until he's put those P-Gens up. And we have got another Mega coming forward. But these pushes in are just getting a little more done each time from Warren. And I don't know how long Quasar is going to be able to hold them off. This Mega will deal with this one easily enough, but he might lose two more T3 mixes before that happens. Can he afford that? I do not think he can. Although I think there's mainly only anti-air left here now. And a gunship raid goes for these mexes up here at the top of Arcade Space. And they might get taken out by the vast, vast amounts of T3 anti-air. Okay, no, that's a pretty good play. They take out the five mexes, they retreat, some gunships survive. Nice play from Quasar. And again, we're settling down into a bit of a stalemate, but you know what breaks stalemates? Lots of artillery and Novaxes. If one of these Pigeons takes a hit from that RT and these shields are going down, then it could be just a bit too much for Quasar. 
And now we're focusing the Novaks again, as the Duke, surrounded by PJs for maximum firepower, is laying down the hurt on Quasar's shields. But Quasar says, you're going to build a Duke? Well, I know some better artery than a Duke. And he starts work on a Scathis, which is under a shield generator. It's under a stealth generator. And in general, it's looking pretty good. A wave of scouts flies over, looking for the nuke. Do they see the Scathis? I don't think they do. Another big push with the Mega. There are two Megas to counter it and quite a lot of bricks. How is this going to fare? And of course the one Mega that Arcade has was severely damaged by the nuke earlier. And as a result, could be easy for these two Megas to finish off despite the much greater amount of spam. Actually most of that is anti-air so if these two Megas can just take the straight fight I think they might win it. Warren says, OK, proceed, I have AA now, and certainly he does. Have they over-invested in AA, given that the main threat... Uh, I mean, sure, there is an amount of gunship here, but the Soul Ripper died and has been reclaimed. And the main threat is from this land army plus the nuke. Interesting formation there for Arcade. Back here, Quasar is losing Mexes to the Arty. That's going to hurt. And it's going to slow down his Scathis production. The Scathis is still only 21% done. Arty fires on the Megas and they retreat a bit. Do I like that? The Novax finishes for Arcade and a Novax plus a Duke is an amazing combination for getting through shields and so I reckon we're going to start seeing some real damage being inflicted and that's now four mixes lost by Quasar to the artillery fire. That's a good defensive nuke but that's a good split from Arcade and I don't think this is going to get much done at all. In it comes, but it's barely got any more kill than it had last time, so that nuke was a bit of a waste. And we see the Novaks flying over, ready to lay down some hurt. But now they've definitely seen the Scathis, because that, um, that Duke is targeting it, the Novaks is heading there, and a lot of resource has been invested into that Scathis so far. They both target it, and how much is that? If that Scathis is on 36%, then quick maths, over 80,000 maths has been put into that Scathis, and the shields around it are dying. This could be a huge, huge loss for Quasar. But we've got another air raid going out to the right from Quasar. And there's not really any anti-air here if it comes in from this way. There's an awful lot here and it is creeping out this way. I don't think there's enough gunships here to stop it. But there's only really this one here. Will it get anything done? This Sam will go down. This engineer will go down. If and the gunships open fire on the mexes. I like this, they're taking out these ones first so they can back away to take out the other ones before the SAMs are built. But the lead for Hot Team in Eco, despite this, is getting pretty brutal and we do now have ASFs for Hot Team. Still, they've lost three mexes. Are they going to lose a fourth? Yes they are. Are they going to lose a fifth? There's only a few gunships left, but they're working as hard as they can on that mechs. No, four mechs destroyed. 
Meanwhile, how are we doing at the Scathis side? Well, the more shields are falling, but Quasar is desperately rebuilding them. Take out all exposed T3 power, says Warren, and that's not a bad shout, because if you take them all down, then the shields will go down. Construction continues on the Scathis. It's now more than half done. But it's looking like it's in a dangerous position. And a few bricks are pushing around here. And it looks like they could get some damage done if they get to here. But there's a lot of point defence there. Ooh, looks like Warren is having some power troubles. Because all of his, his shields just flicked off. I wonder what he's producing that could cause such a... Well, all of these are now T3HQs, which is a bit silly. And is that... Well, it isn't yet, but it is about to be double Duke power raining down on the base. If Quasar can't finish that Scathis, I think he's going to die to the artillery. And that Scathis is looking in a dubious position, to say the least. Quasar's put cloaking on his comb, which in combination with the T3 and with the remarkable amounts of VET, means he has 43,000 hit points and can only be seen by Omni. So, he's going to be a hard nut to crack on his own, but if they take out all his power, then what's he going to do? Is Warren still super power stored? Let's have a check. Yes, he is. Despite producing 33,000 power, he's spending more than he can manage. He picked it up there, but immediately goes back down. So, definite power problems for Warren. They know where the ACU is as well, but and that's because the Novax has Omni. That's brutal. They know where the ACU is because the Novax has Omni and can see him. That's mean. Quasar's got an anti-nuke here, but I don't think we have any nuclear build coming from the hot team. Strategic launch detected. And Quasar nukes again. Where's it going? Well, it's going for here, and this looks like it's quite a good defensive nuke. I think I missed out some words there, but you, you got what I was saying. If it actually hits, because the SMD isn't far away, the SMD is here. If it actually hits, then this Mega is going to die. Boom! It does hit, and the Mega does die, so that's a second lovely defensive nuke. And now these two Megas from Quasar are in a much better position to push in. But we have a strat raid, a huge strat raid, coming in from Warren. However, it's flying straight through Quasar's ASFs, and not many of them are going to survive. Is it going for the comm? You know, I think it might be. The comm moves, he takes a couple of hits, but he survives. So that's one strat raid which has just been neutralised to basically no effect. And I think it would have been better to target that on the Scathis, because that Scathis is now... Where's the guy sitting? 71% done. And he's got enough shielding that despite the Duke and the Novax firing on it, they haven't broken through. Well, I spoke too soon. Curse of the Commentator comes into effect. As for a second, the shield goes down and the Scathis loses just that little bit of... That little bit of health. It's down to 65% now. 
and many of the engineers are moved away to build more shields and reinforce the existing ones. And a second strap raid from Warren comes charging across the map. Now, if it can ha time itself somehow with the Novaks and the Arty, oof, look at this, the Scatters is really taking damage now, and the Strats drop their bombs. And they weaken the shield and the Scathis is down into the red thanks to the delicious blast radius of Revenant bombs. The biggest blast radius of any Strat bomber. And what's Arcade building? Well, is that another Megalith? Is that another Novax? He now does have those two Dukes up and is working on a third. He's completed some monkeys over here. And this feels like the writing is now on the wall and it's just a matter of time for poor old Quasar. The Scathis is taken out and it doesn't leave any reclaim because of how far it was smashed back damage wise. That was an immense amount of mass invested at least 150,000 into that Scathis which has just gone to pot. He's got these units to push but that's not enough to break this front. He's got these Megas even, that still won't be enough. And with these two monkeys and this awful lot of T2 Arty and Ravagers, Fat Boys outrange Ravagers, but Megas do not. He's just not got enough to come in here. That's a lot of tactical missiles. Come the Megas. They're taking artillery fire. They're quite slow, so they might also be vulnerable to these tactical missile launchers. A monkey quickly going up for Warren, and this Mega was just dying to all this firepower here. And broadswords come in. There's not enough anti air from Quasar to take it out. One Mega down. That monkey finishes this second mega, it looks like it's also going down. And we have multiple monkeys from Hot Team pushing in on this flank. That mega's down into the red, it's taken out a lot, but the fact these two megas are still somehow both alive, but that's just about to change. Down they go, and now we have multiple Megas pushing in on Quasar. Loyalists sneaking around the left with nothing to stop them, but that's a bit of a trickle, and they should be masked up first. I don't think that's going to make a difference, though. Poor old Quasar with his scatters destroyed, his experimenters destroyed, multiple artillery pieces and Novaces firing upon him, air attacks, ground attacks. What's he got left? What can he possibly do about this? I am going to make a call that the answer is nothing. He la launches a last defensive nuke, but it might get through. It might take out a bit of this push, but it's not going to help against this push. And even as the nuke is in the air, Quasar resigns and Hot Team wins. What did you think of that, my loyal viewers? I think that the turning point came quite early. Quasar had that beautiful laser, he charged in, he did an immense amount of damage with it, and then he had that monkey behind it. If that monkey had come into Warren's base here, I think it could have gone reasonably unmolested all the way through here, all the way through here, and then into the back of Warren's eco. So, and then the continuing train of monkeys could have continued to inflict damage over here. It would have forced Arcade and Noble to push across this way, it would have forced big fights over here and it would have meant that Quasar could have focused more on his eco which did let him down at points and build up some more. So that's that's my take on what Quasar could have done better. And what's your take? Tell me in the comments below while you're down there. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I am the Commissar and I will see you next time.